Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to talk about phylogenetic trees. Usually when we generate phylogenetic trees we get them unrooted, something that looks like uh, on this picture, those roots shown here, but actually this is a part of my explanation today, so there are not going to be such point on such unrooted phylogenetic tree which shows point of the root. So how such phylogenetic tree we are going to root? There are two major methods. First would be what we call midpoint rooting and the second would be outgroup rooting. So how it works? Here you see that length of the branches is different and out of all lenses we take such a path which would give us the longest tip to tip pass. Let's say that length of this branch is going to be 5 units and say 4 units here and 3 units here and this is going to be longest pass. So 4 plus 5 plus 3 is going to give us 12. So 12 divided by 2 is going to be 6. So that means that our midpoint is going to be here, 6 units from here and 6 units from here and we have found that this is going to be a point where we are going to place our root in this phylogenetic tree. And these black dots represent these nodes on this phylogenetic tree. Now we can say that for example this fragment here is going to be about 2 units and this fragment here is going to be three units. Now take a look at this midpoint rooted phylogenetic tree that we construct using this unrooted phylogenetic tree, but you have to understand that all these vertical lines we do not take into account, only horizontal lines here in this phylogenetic tree corresponds with all these lines that we see in unrooted phylogenetic tree. For example, this four unit branch correspond directly with this branch here. So let's put four units here and for example this two unit here correspond with this line here. So let's put two units here and this fragment corresponds with this line here. So let's put three points here and the last one would be this which also correspond for the three units. This is ultrametric additive tree, so the length of the branches here directly corresponds with the amount of genetic change. Or it can be for example protein change, change in polypeptide sequence or in RNA sequence. Now let's talk about strength and weakness of the midpoint routing. We prefer to use this method when this internal branch where we put a root is long enough and for example if we even miscalculated our midpoint, for example real midpoint should be here or here, 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 here or here, we still going to get correct uh, balance between all the taxa shown here, correct relationship. But what if this branch is going to be very short, for example just this short. In this case we easily can miscalculate and put our midpoint say somewhere here or here and this is going to change the balance between all the taxa here and we can get a wrong picture. So this type of unrooted tree also shows amount of change and we assume that amount of change is going to be the same along all this time, along all this taxa, which is usually not true. Some taxa may develop faster than the rest even during the same period of time because this taxa were under pressure which can include environmental factors or competition. So for example if our midpoint, calculated midpoint would be very close to other nodes, for example one node here, another node here, it is very easy 
to miscalculate and put our midpoint whether to the right or to the left. In this case, we are using different method, which is called outgroup routing. And I'm going to talk about it in my next video. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.